Hello everybody out there in YouTube and welcome back to how to build an F14 Tomcat with a B1 Bob Finger O Matic. Just kidding. Anyways, stab. Uh, I told you guys last weekend that I was going to mold the fuselage. <clears throat> there we go. Fuselage. Got both sections on this side molded. Both sections and that section over here is all molded. So uh Started 7 o'clock yesterday morning, finished 11 o'clock last uh, last night, and I even got the wife out here slapping some epoxy and cloth down. So, uh, if it had been for her, it had been about 4 o'clock in the morning before I got done with this. So, two-thirds of the way done with the fuselage. Got this whole center section down here to do, and then the little areas here on the inside of the inlets, those will be, those will be separate from... This whole center section, fuselage molding is done with a capital D. <laughs> done. <laughs> and uh, after that, it all comes apart. Wash it, wax it, PVA it, making a fuselage. Gonna get a fuselage done here soon. Um, gave Bob a call yesterday before I got, while well, I was waiting on some of this stuff to, to cure. Finger going flying all over there, just for you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was talking to him about this horizontal stab and I've had quite a few people ask me how strong is this thing so for those of you watching do not try this at home we're going to destroy this thing and I have literally beat and banged and stood and stomped and I mean, I've tried everything I could possibly do to get this thing to break Including picking myself off the ground with it sitting on the corner of this table and it hasn't done it's still in one piece and you can see a little bit of scuff mark there from The ground, but I mean that's it. I mean this is insanely strong To a fault other than its weight so uh, Here's what I've found out after doing some more research and uh doing some talking with Bob and a couple other people. Here we have the three millimeter uh, Roja Cell 71, which is essentially the same thing as Airx C7075, I believe it is. Um, white, you can see, put it up against, you can see the kind of the structure to it. It's got a little bit of a uh, transparency to it, to where you can see all the cells it's extremely extremely dense I mean I'm pushing on as much as I can and it just barely dents so this is what the stabs made out of I mean this stuff is really lightweight but it's got a lot of open area between all the cells and the cells are actually closed so the cells don't soak up resin but the in between the cells do this is the PVC stuff that Bob's using it's actually well, I'll tell you what, go put it on a scale. The uh, they're probably about the roughly the same size. So for a completely not the same. <laughs> My piece of white foam. We are showing 12 grams. The stuff Bob uses about the same, eight grams. So it's a little bit smaller, so we'll say 10 grams, 12 grams, so it's already a little bit lighter. But here's where the difference comes in. You hold it up to the light, you can see straight through where they got the little holes for the vacuum infusion for resin to come through. But you see it's not super transparent. And then, take the two together, and you can see the difference. The one on the, the white one. You can see through it a lot more than the pink one. And price difference is huge. This pink stuff, 4x8 sheet from, I believe Bob said Associated Industries, is 80 bucks for 4 foot by 8 foot. That little piece of trash on the lens. My Airx Aroha Cell 71, a 4 foot, or let's rephrase that, a 1 foot by 4 foot is 65 bucks. And you have to ship it from... To get that price, you have to ship it from Germany, which is another $65. So for a 4x8 sheet of this white Airx Rojasel foam, you're talking about 
300 and some odd dollars, 400 bucks for one sheet. 80 bucks, 400 bucks. Yeah, can you think of which one I'm gonna go on with? I'm gonna order some of this stuff. It's stateside, I don't think shipping should be much more than 60 bucks. And even if it is a hundred dollars, it's still half the price of this one. So, let me put y'all up here on the tripod. And we are gonna go get started on destroying that stabilizer. Just need a couple of things. Safety glasses. Gloves. <laughs> put it on the ground and hopefully I don't fall and bust my butt on YouTube and give everybody a good laugh but uh like I said I've stomped and jumped and all kinds of crap on this thing so you can see a little bit of def deforming right there <laughs> really nothing on the bottom it's just Scuff marks. And since it's already been weakened from that, this should be a little bit easier. Ah. <laughs> In case y'all couldn't see that, watch my feet. They don't stay on the ground. As you can see, way too dang strong. <laughs> so the next one, hold your ears. You can see that? It didn't even didn't even budge. <laughs> Ah, finally some damage. <laughs> there we go. A little bit of crack right there. And the leading edge finally started to, to peel apart. And as you see, it's actually not the glue joint that, fa that was failing. It's actually the foam ripping apart. <laughs> so, uh... There. <laughs> if this thing were ever involved in a crash, you could probably reuse this. It's so damn strong. <laughs> I mean, it. I'm putting everything I've got into it. I'm not being gentle, as y'all can see. And it just ain't breaking very easily.
And since uh, I actually closed this all up and did all the internal structure before, I, and without making a video to show you guys, now y'all get to see what it looks like on the inside. Sort of. There's just a lot of crash damage involved. <laughs> Anybody think that was a little overkill? <laughs> ah, all right. Bob, I think our plan to use a solid piece of carbon between the foam and the, and the outer skin isn't really necessary. <laughs> I think just an extra layer of fiberglass might be perfectly fine for that job. That's just insane how much how strong that was. Did not expect that at all. All right, so finally, let's open. <laughs> Empty some of the trash out of here. So we got titanium pivot shaft. As you can see, two pieces of carbon to connect the upper and the lower skin together. This is 145 thousandths thick carbon. Really strong, thick stuff. And then the whole thing here, this big white glob, which is probably a lot of weight right there, I know. It's just a, it's just a test piece. Is epoxy, cotton flock, and milled fibers mixed together. Again, another piece of 145 thousandths thick solid carbon. And then there's a piece of 60 thousandths right on this side. So it's making it almost, it's making it two tenths of an inch thick. And what that does is here, we've got an eighth inch titanium pin that runs through your pivot shaft in a slot in this rib and a cotton flock, uh, milled fibers and all that holds it in on this side. And then the carbon on this end holds it in place. And then 3 16th inch balsa spar running from the intersection of the, the pivot shaft, the rib, all the way out to pretty much right at the tip. So and I know there's a lot of, you see a lot of extra goop here on the edges. I did that just because I didn't want it to come apart if it was a good piece. I did not want these leading edges or anything to, uh, to delaminate if I ended up flying with a part. So I'd rather use a little bit of extra goop on the first part just to see exactly how much I need. So let me see if I can't get this pivot shaft assembly out so y'all guys can see a little bit better. That was easy to first. <laughs> Alright, so can't really see it too well, but Thick carbon, thin carbon, spooge all on the top and the bottom to glue it together. Balsa spar, pivot shaft, more spooge and carbon. And then you can't see it because of all the spooge, but titanium shaft, which is about six inches long. So we run about here to here between that carbon spar. So uh, let's see what this thing weighs. I've had quite a few people, well a couple people tell me that the carbon isn't necessary because it'll actually act like a blade and uh, it could actually rip its way out of <coughs> out of this the skins just because it's stronger than the skins are. Come back on scale. Alright, poundage. Well I guess my battery's going dead. Pew. Point four pounds, so yeah, maybe that's a little overkill. <laughs> so this will get lightened up as well. I'm not gonna change the shaft. I know Bob mentioned using a, a like a tube, like a, a thick wall tube. Um, I don't mind the tube idea too bad on certain things. I did some work in CAD and I figured out a 
a 60,000th thick wall titanium tube compared to this, and there was only a tenth of a pound, maybe 15 hundredths of a pound difference. <clears throat> and for the, honestly, for the weight difference, I'd rather have a stab that weighs 0. 0.6 pounds with a solid shaft, or even 0. 0.7 pounds, than a, a stab that weighs half a pound or slightly under with a tube. And the reason why I say that is because I've had a couple instances with kits in the past where they used a steel, a steel tube that was really thick while it was like a hundred like a tenth of an inch thick like really thick stuff and uh, a little bit smaller diameter and I've actually had the tubes kink just outside of the stab granted the tube was probably a little undersized because I think it was only about three-eighths of an inch maybe a little bit smaller than that but I like the idea of a solid a solid shaft a lot more than I do a tube just so I don't have to worry about that thing ever kinking I've seen guys uh, with tubes on them, somebody, a spectator kicked it during a noontime lineup or whatever and it kinked it and they didn't realize it and then this, uh, the tube failed in flight. So tubes are alright, I don't have anything against them, I just personally like a solid shaft. It's like an extra 20 bucks in materials for a solid shaft compared to a tube. So now you guys know the reason with the finger romantic behind the pound and a half stab half a pound uh, I'm actually pretty happy with that I think if I get rid of some of this carbon I'll use some uh, some of this white foam with carbon and laminate on both sides I'll probably get rid of at least a tenth of that so 0.4 pounds for this assembly let's see what one wing skin or one stab skin weighs I bet you it's close to half a pound by itself Put it on poundage. Stupid scale. Quit messing up. All right. Look at that. One's one half of a skin, six tenths of a pound. There you go. Just the skins are a pound. So, uh, Anybody got an idea why this thing weighs a pound? Just that? <laughs> I can tell you. I did some research over the week about this stuff. This stuff soaks up 450 grams of resin per square meter. You're probably wondering what that means. Um, that works out to be about an ounce and a half per square meter, so ounce and a half per three square feet. Each one of those stabs, one skin is two and a half square feet. So there's four ounces of resin right there. There's a third of a pound just in resin trapped in this foam. So you figure a third of a pound in foam and then the weight of the foam and then the weight of the carbon and then the two layers of fiberglass and then the other layers of carbon and then all the internal structure. No reason the thing, thing weighed a pound and a half. So, uh, this, I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to reuse this shaft after I put it on a dial indicator, make sure it's not bent after all that beating and banging on it. And, um, yeah, I'm going to get some of this pink foam on order from Associated Industries. And uh, next weekend, fuselage, going to finish doing that center section next weekend, hopefully. Easter weekend, might end up going to see family, I don't know. But fuselage is going to get molded. Hopefully pink foam will be here. Pink foam shows up. We'll be doing two more horizontal stabs. And uh, then we'll start doing templates for those vertical fins, wing panels, and fuselage parts. So, until the next video in the shop. Which maybe this might be this afternoon trimming those parting points. Don't know. We'll see. So, until then... Y'all have a great afternoon, and we will see you back in the shop.